Once again, we join Niels Jørgensen, but this time conditions are completely different. It's late season and the salmon will be spawning shortly, and they've all migrated far up the river systems. The salmon are no longer shiny, but are adopting spawning colors of gold, brown and orange. Join us once again for lots of catches and dramatic fights with big salmon. The weather changes constantly this time of year. Days of beautiful sunshine and clear skies are quickly pushed aside by rain showers and wind coming in from the northwest. It's getting colder and colder by the day. In the air as well as in the water, and salmon are not as active as earlier in the season. The fishing's been slow today. Niels has been fishing since morning and not caught a fish, even though the upper pools of the river hold many salmon. A change of tactics has brought Niels to the lower part of the river late in the day. The current is slow and uniform. Maybe not the most obvious location this time of year, but when experience fails you, it's time to do something different. On the other hand, Niels is using a fly he knows works well this time of year. This simple fly with the strong yellow contrast color has often saved the day. In this slow current, the fly is fished downstream and across, or straight across the current, letting it swing all the way to your own bank before retrieving in slow, steady pulls. Good fish. Thank you, Tom. He's fighting very aggressive, this one. Well, it's been a long day fishing in the cold here, but this fish he fell for. Fishing with a good sink tip and put on a, a big fly, not a heavy fly. But a fly hanging, it's very light the fly, so it the tip, sink tip pushes it down and then the fly is light so it hangs and becomes very alive this way. And it looks like this has done it because we had some pools in another pool also, in the same fly and we've been fishing with all kinds of stuff. But this looks like to be the compass here. The water is extremely cold.
go. Oh, now we're talking. Here, Niels is fishing a pool that usually holds many fish this time of year. The pool is easily covered with a traditional downstream and a cross presentation, but Niels chooses an upstream presentation with a weighted black fly. He chooses to fish upstream for two good reasons. Firstly, this is one of the most popular pools on the river and it's been fished hard the past weeks. The fish have seen many different flies but are now presented with a fly with a completely different action in the water. Secondly, the water is low and by approaching the salmon from a downstream position, there's less risk of spooking them. Niels uses short casts in order to present the fly precisely. Just as the fly hits the surface, he begins a fast retrieve. The fly should be retrieved slightly faster than the current. Niels is moving up through the pool and, because he's approaching from a downstream position, the fish haven't spooked as he caught the first salmon. As he moves upstream, he's continually casting more and more across the stream. Here, he casts slightly upstream, almost straight across. Fly sinks and the salmon takes. That's how easy salmon fishing can be. We're experiencing a very good fishing, or an upstream fishing today. And the reason why I've chosen this is because I'm fishing in a pool that's had quite a lot of pressure this season. Here in the, the Rettestrenka it's called, it's a spawning ground. The fish here have seen more or less any fly in the book, I think. And people have been standing upstream and casting down on them, so they know the, the movement by now. And we've had so many takes and landed fish and 
It's been a fantastic morning. So once again this technique by giving the fish a little second to see the fly and they don't see you, it has proven itself once again. We're starting this morning fishing in uh, cold water that's around 2 or 3 degrees now. We have a deep hole here underneath the bridge where there's around 10-15 salmon standing. In order to get these to move, I've chosen the Red Francis fly and I'm going to upstream him. I don't have much faith in my floating lines now and the small flies because they really are stuck. I can see them here. I'm going to try to sight fish him and put this Red Francis very close to him and see if he reacts to that. Yes.
it's three degrees, high water level still, colored water. First trick, finding the salmon. Now this is a rather small pool. Normally, during the late season, I would expect to find the fish in the back of the pool because they're getting ready to spawn. I wouldn't expect that now because there's a very hard current down here. So the fish will most likely go a bit more up and stay underneath the hard water where they can rest more. And up here we have two streams coming out, one over there and one there. Just where they meet, I can see a small mirror. And this means there's some calm water there. It's still moving, but there's a little hole, some calm water. And this is where I would expect to find the fish right now. Niels covers the pool thoroughly, but feels nothing and heads on to another similar pool. Some places salmon aren't particularly shy, at others they spook easily. It varies from pool to pool and from river to river. Here, the salmon are holding tightly in a small pool, and even though the water isn't particularly clear, they're quite shy. If you were to simply walk to the edge and look down, the salmon would see you and spook immediately. They'd hide further up the pool, where the water's deeper and there's foam on the surface, so they can't be seen. The salmon may not spook as such, but they're alerted to your presence. Therefore, it's always important to approach a pool without the salmon seeing you. Nice one. Wow. Woo. Hoo -hoo.
<laughs> Great stuff. It is very cold and very wet. The water level is been rising quite a lot today uh, about this and uh, it's coloring up. And we have this small foss here that has been holding quite a few fish. In a situation like this, there's good things and bad things. One thing is that we won't be able to fish small flies on a surface which I prefer in this river. We have to put on a tube to get down. And we need something visible since it's quite brown the water now. The good thing is, I've just landed two fish. And in colored water like this, you're actually able to pull quite a few fish out of one pool. Because they, they don't see everything that goes on and they easily come down again and stand in the colored water. So, I put on a, this is a copper tube fly that I like to use in the autumn fishing. I upstreamed him into a fuss. And Many people say that you will have to worm fish into a fuss, but with these tubes you cast upstream and let them go down and strip them in, you're actually able to drag quite a lot of fish out of these fosses. When you're fishing with weighted flies like this and in tungsten flies, you have to slow your casting rhythm down. You can't make narrow loops with them. You have to really lay the rod down front and back, otherwise you will hit yourself in the head with this and you don't want to go to a hospital in the middle of a good fishing trip. But I'm gonna catch a few more if I'm lucky. Sometimes when upstream fishing, I use a nymph technique called the wiggle cast in order to get the fly down. It's quite easy to do, you just let the fly line go and then you wiggle the top of the fly rod. We'll try again here. Wiggle the rod. You can see how the line curves. And this does, the fly gets to sink a bit before I start to strip it in. Compared with if I just cut like straight, then the fly will just get dragged down right away.
the temperature has dropped further down to two degrees now. And I have to say, this is some of the most cold summer vision I've ever done. Water is extremely cold. Temperature in the air is extremely cold. The fish are standing out there in the flooded river, which is very colored now. So it's really, really tough circumstances. But I have had very good activity by adding a sink tip to my line, a super fast sink tip and a light fly. Well, the idea is that the fly gets pushed down, but the fact is that nothing has been touching the fly when it's been coming in with a classic swim. But when I've started to strip the fly slowly, then I've had pulls. I've lost four fish and landed one fish, so I think that's quite a stunning result under these extreme circumstances. There are many who believe that you have to fish the fly very slow and just put it right in the face of the fish here when it's this cold. But it hasn't been moving today. Mine has been stripped slowly and this is like I said when it's been taken the fly. So it's not always enough just to move it. Here it's like when it's had this, it becomes more aggressive when you start to pull it. We ran to a big fish here in a small pool in the Østerdal River. We were standing all the way in the back in the fast water. But the smallest fast water area where we go in this river now. It's this classic big fish, it's just going down deep. I think this is a big colored male. I saw him down here in the shallow. This has been into the same technique as we've been using earlier today. Classic downstream, but moving the fly at the same time, it, it seems to be what they do, uh, the, the take now, because I haven't had on anything else on this today. This guy he has got a, a place he just wants to stay over there. He goes to the same place all the time. Now I caught him a bit in and then he swims right back out and stands in his hole. Same move again. Moves a bit, goes back. Now it would be nice with some shallow water here. Whoa, look at the fish! <laughs> look at the fish! <laughs> That's a serious fish. That's a serious fish. I would be happy if there was a shallow bank here now. Where are they when you need them? <laughs> you don't want to go down there. If he goes down in the end of this, he can use the current and then I'm lost. I really would like to get him up here because there is a chance of getting him into the bank here. But when your fish like this goes out in the current, I just have a problem. I have a little hook and Big fish, very strong current. But I'm trying to keep him up on the surface so he won't go down again and oh. <laughs> no 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 this can't happen this can't happen fuck it's happening
The current is too strong here as well, but further down, Neil spots a shallow area in the middle of the river. This is not a male salmon, as Niels thought, but a big and beautiful hen salmon, 102 centimeters long. But Niels still has a small dream about catching one of the really big male salmon. It's the end of September and close season is just a few days ahead. It's been rainy and cold, but the weather's changed and now it's nice and warm. Water's high and murky and the current is strong. The water's only three to four degrees warm. Because of the cold water, I have chosen today to fish quite deep. Niels has chosen a lightly weighted fly, but in order to fish it deep, he uses a setup which he explains here. My fly here and then I have some nylon or fluorocarbon just rather short to the sink piece so the line fly line sinking part will force the fly down fast if it's too long the fly will be hanging up in the water and in this circumstance it's cold water I want him down so here I have a part that sinks it's a sink 2 it's called the shooting head is density compensated and it uh, has a very nice taper here you see that the dark part of a fly line goes over to an, into an intermediate part and in the back it's a floating. And the floating part here is very visual, I see it easily on the water when I cast a distance. So it's float on the back, intermediate and sink two. So this line will hang down straight, floating in the back and going down in the tip here and simply make the perfect sweep right in front of the fish.
On this particular stretch and under these particular conditions, this setup will fish the fly approximately one meter below the surface. If you wish to fish deeper or higher in the water, simply change the sink tip leader. What I did is I waded up on the top of this little pool there, fished downstream classic swing. And in the middle of the pool I felt like a tiny little pool in the shallow water. I cast the fly out again, and when it came in, I started stripping it. So, second time he came, I moved it though. I fished it more aggressive, and it took very hard. Boom! Yep! Yep! Woo! And I knew right away that I had hooked a very big fish. Great stuff this. You can definitely feel this is a big fish. This is one of Laksa's famous monsters, I think. My guess right now is it is this is a really big fish. I don't have any control over this guy. Now he's off again. Yeah, he's this one. Whoa, he was up. Yes. Whoa, it's a big one. Many of them, they will go. Because of long fights and the hook will eventually lose them. I don't feel the line will break. I have a powerful line on now. I could go up in the size of the line. Because the water is quite colored. Whoa, oh, oh, it's a big one. Yes, it's a very, very big male. It's definitely over 20 pounds, this one. This is one of the Laksa monsters we have here. It's really heavy. I really can't move this fish. Okay, come on. Oh. Can't move it at all. It just goes down and stands. It doesn't move at all. It takes a break, then it goes on again for a while. Maybe if I go down to and pull him in this way. Sometimes you really just have to turn their head towards you, then you can pull him. But there's like, ah, he's just, he's not giving in. He keeps on putting his head the other way, and then you can use the current to go out. There, I turned him now. And now he's turning back. I think this is the heaviest fish I've ever had on. I simply can't get him anymore. This is simply bad. He's just stuck to the bottom. Nothing, I can't do anything. Now it's going again. Nothing. Nope. I can't put more pressure on him now. I'm gonna try this again. Oh, Otherwise, I have a feeling we're gonna be here all day. Hopefully we can get into the, get him out of the current, then uh, I have a chance. Oh, I'm going out again. I have an advantage now. I have him a bit up in the water, so I'm keeping him, keeping him, keeping him up, so he can't go down and use the current. But now he's, yeah, he's trying, but he's getting tired. I can feel. 
Yeah. He's got so much weight, this fish. He's tired now, the fish. He's tired. Whoa! Big fish. Jesus. Yes! <laughs> Whoa! Yes! <laughs> what a bloody fish! Whoa! <laughs> Look at this monster! Look at that monster! Wow! Here we go. And here comes a moment of truth. I'm not in doubt that we are on the right side of 100 centimeters here. It's 109 centimeters long. <laughs> this is amazing. Look at the tail of this guy. The estimated weight of a fish like this, he was one meter and nine centimeters long and he was 56 around. He's probably around 13 and a half kilos, I would say. Fishing under this tough circumstances and having a big beautiful fish like this, that's difficult to beat. Yeah.